What a great time of the praise and worship, amen? I mean, God has been good to us, and we, He deserves all the glory and everything that we can give Him. As we get ready to start, it's time for our kindergarten first and second graders. If you can go ahead and be dismissed, Miss Carrie's in the back right there. Kindergarten first and second graders, you may be dismissed. And we'll see you after your time there is over, and we'll get you all back in here together, amen? The first Sunday of Advent, hope, hope. Hope is an amazing thing to have, but it's a tragic thing to lose, amen? And I believe that we are living in a time where people have really begun to lose hope. And it's a tragedy as we look around and we look at society and we even begin to look inside churches and I think sometimes we see the idea of losing hope, that things are hopeless now. We don't have anything to look forward to. Uh, But can I declare this to you? Even as 2020 has been a year like no other, there is still hope and a reason to celebrate Christmas. Amen? And that's what we want to do here at First Baptist West. We want to give God the honor and glory. We want to declare that, my friends, we have hope in Jesus Christ. Amen? We have hope in Him today. And it's not like a hope that you give for kids when you put a birthday cake in front of them and you light the candles and you say, close your eyes, make a wish, and blow out the candles. And the kid says, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope I get this. My friend, that's not the hope we're talking about. It is that blessed assurance. It is that definitive thing that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt God is in control and God is going to end this the way he desires for it to end. And listen, my friends, he is working for us. Amen. So we have hope. That's the first candle of Advent that we're celebrating today is the idea of hope. And so as we look this morning, and the idea of my title of my message today is Divine Intervention. God has given us, through Jesus Christ, divine intervention. Amen? And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 4. We're going to be reading today chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And I want you to go ahead and please stand in honor of reading God's Word this morning. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia, and he wants them to understand what has been given to them through Jesus Christ. And my friends, today, I want to declare to you all here, I want to declare to you at home, what God has done for us through Christ Jesus to give us hope. The Bible says here in chapter 4, verse 4, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that we have hope this morning, that even in these crazy times, in the times of turmoil, in the times of conflict, times of confusion, and God, when all the world around us seems to be losing that hope, that Father, we as your children would realize the hope that we have in us and the hope that is ready for us, and that God, that we could focus on you this morning, and I thank you for that divine intervention that you have placed on all men through, through Christ Jesus. And Father, I pray today that the words that I'm about to say will not be my words, not my opinions, but Father, they will be your words. I pray that this, is, this message would be yours and not mine. And I pray, Father, the response would be as you desire for it to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Divine intervention. When we're talking about intervention, basically what we're saying is an intervention. Intervention is an action taken to improve a situation. So when we have interventions with people, what our goal is is to take them from this place they're in and place them in a whole different, more positive situation. Can I tell you today, my friends, the reason we have hope is because of God's divine intervention to us. Is what he did was he took us who basically had no hope and we had nothing to look forward to. We were lost in our sin and he took us from that and he moved us, not decorated us up, not, not make us better, not make us behave better, not to 
talk better, to think better, to act better, not to do any of those things, but to realize that God took us from this situation of being lost and he intervened through Jesus Christ and put us into a whole better, much better situation of being saved. Amen? So we are not changed in our behavior. We're not changed in our thoughts. We're not changed in all that. We are changed completely from one situation to another. And so the Bible tells us here, a couple things I want to look at, is at the fullness of time. Now what is it mean here in verse 4, at a fullness of time? It is the idea that was prophesied by Daniel. Now I shared in the first service, I have to be really careful here, because I love preaching and teaching prophecy. And so we look in the book of Daniel, and we see that in the fullness of time, from, from what Paul is writing here, what he's referring to is back into the captivity of, of Daniel and, and Israel. We see that he promised them that from the time that Artaxerxes had let them go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, we are promised there this, or they were promised. He says, know therefore and understand. That from, going the, from the going forth of the command to restore the build, and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks of 62 weeks. And this is in Daniel 25. Now what we're seeing here is that when Artaxerxes was able to, he allowed them to go back and to be, begin to rebuild, Daniel was promised through a prophecy that there would be basically 69 weeks of seven years. 69 years of seven years. That week is not a seven day, but a seven years. So there was 69 weeks or 69 years of seven year intervals. And so he said, on this date, 69 weeks will pass from the time you get to Jerusalem to rebuild that you will then see the Messiah come. And it was exactly those 69 weeks that we see that Daniel prophesied that Jesus rode into Jerusalem triumphantly. So he said there are 69 weeks, so it was prophesied. Now, you say, well, what about the 70 weeks? Well, if you look in the book of Daniel, now again, here, I'm, i got to be careful. Slow down. Because there's another week left that's coming. Those haven't been, those are prophesied, but they haven't been fulfilled. There's one more seven-year period that's coming. And that's when Jesus comes to receive the church. And we raptured up. And then from that time, the, tri- the great tribulation will begin. There's a seven-year period that was prophesied that still is yet to come. Sixty-nine weeks have come. There's one more week still left. But what I'm meaning by this is this was prophesied. So when he says, when the fullness of time came, from the time the prophecy was fulfilled. Now listen, there's hundreds and thousands of prophecies that were given but this is just the big one. This is the one they, because listen, do you know what happened? That when this happened, these, these were, this was a time when it was expected. They should have been waiting on Jesus. They should have been anticipating Jesus because these, these folks, the, the religious Jews, knew the prophecy. As a matter of fact, they even knew the time and the place that the Messiah would come from. They knew he would be born a baby in Bethlehem within this time frame and so it was a time that was fulfilled in other words it was the promise given so Jesus was born as a promise when God's timing when everything that he declared to be true happened Jesus was born they should have been expected they've been taught about it they knew everything about it my friends that's what the advent is even now for is that we've been now told that there's coming a time of Jesus Christ coming again amen Jesus is coming again. That's part of our blessed hope. Is that Jesus Christ, we're not left here alone. Jesus is coming. So it's prophesied, it's laid out there. So at that time, when all of this was fulfilled, God made a great divine intervention on mankind. Because God then intervened. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that God rescued us. He basically freed us. He freed us from being bound by sin. Because every person that's born is bound into this this sin. And and we're wrapped up in sin. And our nature is sinful. And now listen, the world wants to try to tell everybody that people are good by nature. Listen to me. If we're good by nature, we shouldn't need laws. 
if we're good by nature, we shouldn't have rules placed out there in front of us because we're all going to do that which is right. There shouldn't be a, a direction. As a matter of fact, if, if, and I learned this in all my years of being a math teacher and a girls basketball coach for those 17 years that I did that before I became a pastor. I promise you that if I ever left that classroom for more than 15 seconds, <laughs> chaos would ensue. As a matter of fact, that someone would come, maybe the uh, superintendent would come and get me and say, I need to talk to you for a second. My threat was, don't move or you will die because I'm coming again. But I knew the minute I walked out that room, I would have to keep listening because it wasn't going to be long until those good people by nature were going to not be good people by nature anymore. Amen? So we see that as people, we are bound by sin. We are slaves to sin here. That I am wrapped up and I can't do anything but sin. My friend, the world today is not a surprise to God. And it shouldn't be a surprise to us because the world today is acting like the world's going to act. With sinful nature. So we are intervened. We were rescued from that. But not only were we rescued from that. But we also see that we were hopelessly headed to the grave. We sing that song about when he called my name, I ran out of that grave. Amen? Because that means that all of us are condemned. The Bible doesn't say that one day everyone without Christ will be condemned. What does it tell us? That right now everybody without Christ is condemned already. So we are living in sin. We are sinful by nature. We are trapped in a grave and there's not anything you or I can do to improve ourselves enough to get out of that grave. So in sense, we are hopeless. And when God saw us as sinners, he saw that we were hopeless and he saw that we were people with absolutely no hope. And here's what he did. He intervened in the fullness of time. God intervened for us who had no hope, who were bound by sin, were hopelessly headed to the grave, a separation from him. He intervened in our lives. He rescued you and I. And he gave that rescue to every person who would believe. But not only did he rescue us, but listen what else he did. He elevated us. He took us from that grave. He took us from being down in that depth and he raised us up and he elevated us to change our position again from being slaves listen here's this is good from being slaves to being heirs of God wow do you know what that means that means again from being slaves to heirs basically in first Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 says this blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy, now listen, has begotten us again to a living hope. Hope. A living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. My friends, we have hope because he has elevated us from this idea of being lost to being saved. Again, not decorating us up, not making us turn over new leaves, not make us talk better, think better, but literally changed us from one place to the other. He, can ch he changed my condition. And the thing that we can celebrate and the reason we have hope in that change is that he tells us here in First Peter is because it's incorruptible. That transition from here to here last forever we don't have to wonder how long is this good for how long can i trust in this and how much work do i have to put in to keep this happening to keep this strong peter says this was incorruptible means it lasts forever nothing can be done to change us from being saved to being lost amen we don't have to worry every day. We don't have to wake up and say, God, is this the day that you forget who I am? God, is this the day that I mess up so badly that you reject me and you throw me away and you want nothing to do with me anymore? This is incorruptible. It lasts for eternity. That's why it says that he gives us eternal life. 
My friends, listen to me. Eternal life does not begin when you die. That's just a continuation of what the eternal life you have right now. We already, if we, ha- and that's why I have hope. I have hope here and I have hope there because that's never, listen to me, that is never, ever, ever going to be taken away from you. If you trust in Jesus, Paul says, I am persuaded, I am convinced that he whom I've given myself over to will keep all of those things that I've entrusted against that day. I am persuaded that I am eternally secure. So it's incorruptible, it lasts forever. But not only is it uncorruptible, but it also says it's undefiled. Man, it's perfect. It's clean. It means that it's there and it's never going to be tarnished again. It's, it can't be defiled. It can't be messed up, no matter what I do. Because listen to me, it's not my blood that was shed, it was His. And it cannot be taken away from me, but it cannot be messed up. The Bible tells us that whosoever believes in him, that he would not perish but have eternal life. And then if we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive us of our sin, which means to pull us from there to here, but then to also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So in other words, this stain of sin is no longer there on me. I don't even have the stain of sin anymore. It is cleansed, cleansed away. I do not have to worry about slipping back into that over there because I can never go back. And listen to me. Here's the great thing that I have hope in. God does not keep count of my sins. He doesn't give me a certain amount of points and say, okay, if you, once you use them up, you're done. Because, and God never reminds me of my sin. Do you know who reminds us of our sin? Satan. Satan will remind you of your sin because he will come to you and say, who do you think you are? Do you not remember when? God will never tell us remember when. Because it's perfect and it's clean. It's never to be tarnished again. But not only that, now here's something even just as good. He says in 1 Peter, it doesn't fade away. Here's the cool thing, it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. It doesn't, doesn't lose its color. It doesn't lose its value. Man, it's always going to be there. How many of you here and how many of you at home remember when you received Jesus as your Savior? You remember that day? Man, and you, you remember how you felt? Do you remember, you remember how excited you were for a long time? And man, you were excited. All you want to do is tell people about being saved. And man, I've told you part of my testimony, man, with the night I received Christ, we went to pizza. I couldn't help but first I went home, told my mom and dad I got saved. I went to pizza, told the waitress I got saved. I, I, I told everybody else I got saved. Everybody I saw, I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. I got saved. But something happened. Somewhere in there, I didn't tell everybody all the time. And then I began to just live my life. But I remember that time when I received Jesus as my Savior and how excited I was and how thrilling it was to know it and tell people. He said, this right here, this that I've been given, this intervention, doesn't have to fade away. As a matter of fact, the Bible says I can be renewed in my spirit. How much? Every single day. So I can, listen, I can be just as excited today about my salvation as I was when I was 17 years old at Shelter First Baptist Church. If I'm not, what happened? Did the power and the, res- the power of the resurrection, did the, the joy and all that pass away? No, I haven't been renewed in my spirit daily. But folks, I can feel that. I can know that. As a matter of fact, I have been taken and, and cleansed and I'm now no longer, that stuff is incorruptible, undefiled, does not fade away. And it reminds me, as I, as I was planning this, putting this all together, it reminded me of a play of Annie, a little orphan Annie. Now, I know this may shock some of y'all, but I actually have seen this. Doesn't mean I liked it. But I saw it. But as I, as I began to think about that play and I began to think about what was promised here, there's a couple of things that, that kind of run parallel. If you'll remember in Little Orphan Annie, she was in an orphanage 
having no hope, nothing there, no life. It, meant it was a horrible situation. She had no dreams, nothing to look forward to in her life, but she was taken from that, and she was taken over to the Warbucks mansion. And man, she was given a mansion. Can I tell you today that if you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have a mansion. He says, fear not. Do not let your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, you believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to pre- pre- prepare that mansion for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. 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 I am taken from no hope with nothing in my life. I have been there and I have been given a mansion. Boy, there's hope in that. Amen. But you also remember, not only was it a mansion, but she, she was being controlled by a spiteful, alcoholic caretaker that didn't care, abusive and, and, and neglectful. But man, she was brought over here and given a, a loving, caring father. And Daddy Warbucks. But my friends, can I tell you today, the world is mean and hateful and cold and rude and does not love you one bit. Paul, but man, when you received, when he intervened for you and you received Jesus in your life, man, you were brought over here. We have a loving, caring father that wants to do nothing but take care of us. He says, all things work together good for those who are called by my name according to his purpose. For me, for you. We get the loving, caring Father that's never going to leave us and never going to forsake us. Amen? But not only that, but she had absolutely no possessions. She had nothing of her own. Anything that was received, you remember, it was taken away. So nothing there. But man, listen to me. We have been now given the fortunes of God at our disposal. Just like she was. What was she had nothing, but she was given over here to the, the Warbucks mansion, and everything in that mansion, everything that Daddy Warbucks owned, was now at her disposal. Can I tell you, everything of God, my friends, is at our disposal today. The power of God is in, is in us through Jesus Christ. That same Holy Spirit is here. It's in me. And I have hope now. As a matter of fact, it says, I am heirs with Christ. Through, I am heirs of God through Christ Jesus. Everything that is God's is now mine. Everything that is of God is now yours. It's at your possession. You want to get through these years? It's yours. You have the ability to get through this. Amen? You want to overcome all the things that are coming out after us? You can overcome them. You know how? Because Jesus overcame the world. And if Jesus overcome the world, that same power is now ours. We're overcomers. We have hope no matter how bad 2020 gets. No matter how bad 2021 is. Guess what? We have hope. Because everything of God is at our disposal. And the last one, very quickly, was not only then did she have the the hard knock life, if you'll remember that. She had a hard hard, hard knock life. Man, things were tough for her. She was beaten down every day. But now she has a sunny tomorrow. Amen? She has a sunny tomorrow. No, I am not going to sing it. I know some of you are sitting there going, Oh, I hope he sings tomorrow, tomorrow. No, it's not happening. Amen. But she had a sunny tomorrow. Can I tell you? Oh, with great confidence. Not with that hope, I hope, I hope tomorrow works out. But friends, can I tell you because of the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine that I can tell you tomorrow is a sunny day. I can tell you that we have hope for tomorrow. We have hope for the next day. We have hope for the next day and the next day and the next day because God is in control of all of those days. He has already worked them for us. Oh, they may be tough. Listen to me. I'm not going to tell you that they're going to be easy. I'm not going to tell you that things are going to work exactly how you want them to go. But I'm here to tell you, you have hope for tomorrow through Jesus Christ because he is going to be there ready. He is going to take care of everything. He is preparing the way for us and preparing us. Listen, he is preparing us for the way. I think sometimes we as Christians, we get the idea that Jesus is now in us and he's going to prepare everything smooth, everything out for us. But folks, listen to me. He's preparing us for whatever's out there. 
So it may be tough tomorrow, but you know what? He's going to allow me to overcome it because he's preparing me for that. He's working in me for that. And he has given me hope for that. So whatever comes our way, we are ready if we have Christ living in us. Because he has intervened for us, my friends. He has given us divine intervention in the right fullness of time. Listen to it again. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that he might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer, no longer over here a slave to sin, but now you are moved over here as a son, and if a son, then an heir of God with full hope, full hope. For whatever comes today and the next day and the next day. If you have Jesus Christ in your life. But can I tell you this and I'll wrap it up. If you don't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you, there is no hope. You can't do it yourself. But he can. So if you're here today or you're at home and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then you, you, would you call on his name today? Receive him into your life. That you can know the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Because this Jesus is coming again. But until he comes, we are heirs of God. <clears throat> there is hope, my friend. So can we celebrate Christmas today? You bet we can. Can we have a joyous new year? You bet we can. Can we have a great next year? You bet we can. It may not be easy. It may be so much unexpected stuff, but we have hope in Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this time. I'm going to pray. Ask for the uh, praise team to come back. And we're going to step into a time of praise and worship again. And man, I hope and I pray that when you stand in just a moment, you are standing as one who is ready to give God praise, but if you're here today or you're listening and, and you're watching at home, but some way, somehow God has spoken to your heart and you realize that you don't have that hope because you've never given your heart to Jesus, would you come this morning? Would you call out to his name at home? Would you call out and say, God, I know that I'm lost and I need you. God, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save me. Would you come today? But maybe you're here, maybe you're at home, and you say, well, I know I have Jesus, but Pastor... Man, the world has beaten me down, and it's tough. I want you to call on him today and say, God, restore back to me the joy of your salvation, that I can have hope again, that I can rest in knowing that you've allowed me to overcome, that the power of God is working in me, and I want to be renewed today. I want to live with hope. I want to share that hope. Thank you for the divine intervention you've given me today. Oh, my friend, would you call that? As we get ready to, to do this, then we'll end with the Lord's Supper. And during that, this time also, not only that, I want you to just pray that God would begin to, to stir your spirit, to prepare you for the Lord's Supper in just a few moments. Father, hear our prayer today. In all that you've done for us, may we rejoice as we continue to sing your praise. Father, prepare our hearts right now. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friends, would you stand with me at home? Would you begin to sing with us as the praise team leads us? I shared this in, in first service and hadn't planned to uh, before today. But when I picked this song out, I didn't realize how it would relate to the sermon. But I, I always think we ought to uh, testify to it when we see the Holy Spirit moving in a really powerful way. Uh, the song we're about to sing, we've sung before, um, and I've mentioned this to you before. It comes from Psalm 130, and it's called, I Will Wait For You. And this word for wait here is elsewhere translated in Scripture as hope. Uh, so I hope this harks back to the sermon for you as we sing it. And uh, you realize that this is not, we're not talking about just waiting aimlessly, but this song is about waiting with a sense of promise and a sense of expectation. I'll start us out and then you join me. Out of the depths I cry to you 
In darkest places I will call Incline your ear to me anew And hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Sing with me. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yes. stand redeemed by grace alone. I will wait for you, I will wait for you on your word. I will rely, I will wait for you, surely wait for you.
Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. As we prepare now to the final part of our service, to celebrate the hope that we've been given through Jesus Christ, we will observe the Lord's Supper. I always want to encourage you and give everybody at home a second to get your elements, but the idea about the Lord's Supper, and I give warning that the only people that, that I would encourage not to take this is if you're here today or you're at home and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my friends, this is not for you. This is not a time to be mocking this. This is a time to know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. So if you're here today, you're at home, and, and you do know Jesus, and He is your Lord and Savior, you know of that time that you've received Him into your life, then I invite you to observe the Lord's Supper with us all here today. Amen? The Lord's Supper was instituted by Jesus, but Paul actually did it in the church in the book of 1 Corinthians. And so Paul was referring to the night that Jesus Christ was with his apostles and he was talking to them about what was going to be taking place and so he wanted to have one more time with them. And so today when we come together here we are observing that time, the body and the blood of Jesus. So if you'll prepare your elements now, we take the the wafer and as Jesus broke the bread he offered up a prayer so let's pray father in the name of jesus we come to you and we thank you for for your body lord that you gave on the cross for us as they nailed you to the cross lord you did it out of love and you gave yourself a sacrifice to many so today lord as we take part in this we honor you in all that you've said and done in jesus name And then Jesus broke the bread and he said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same that he did with the blood. So would you join me in prayer. Father, we thank you again for the body that was broken for us. But now Lord, we thank you for the blood that you sacrificed and you shed on the cross for us. And the Bible is very clear, Lord, as you've written, that without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption of sin. So, Father, we thank you for that blood, that it's not our blood that can do anything, but, Lord, it's yours. So now as we take part in this, we ask, God, that you let us remember the blood that you shed. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And then Jesus said... This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And Paul goes on to write, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And that's what we've done today. We've proclaimed him and we honor him. Let me lead you in prayer. Father, thank you. For this very special occasion that we get to be a part of today. Thank you for allowing us to observe this time. And Father, it's through all of this that we give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for coming today. Thank you at home for joining us. And we want to again invite you to come and join us in person the next time you possibly can. But continue to join us every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. A couple things I want to bring to your attention. First of all. You have a pamphlet in your, in your bulletin, and this is talking about um, the week of prayer for international missions. This is our um, Christmas offering, and so we want to encourage you to be in prayer and, and take this home with you, and you will see that every day there's somebody else that you can be praying for about missions. And this, um, this Christmas offering that we take up, and we'll take it up on the 30th, I'm, I'm sorry, on the, the 20th, but you can give any time starting tomorrow, even online, you can give to this. And everything, this is the Foreign Mission Board, International Mission Board. This is their greatest fundraiser for the year that we do as churches to support our foreign missionaries. And so please be in prayer about that. And if you'll also go to our Facebook page, there will also be a daily video to watch this week to remind you about praying for our missionaries. And so we want to encourage you to give uh, to that. The second thing that I want to mention is Willow Park Christmas ornaments. What we do here is at Willow Park Nursing Home, we uh, buy gifts for 
uh, the residents there. And out in our lobby on the uh, connection center, there's, you'll see some bulbs, little cutout bulbs. And on there is a name of an individual and some things that they've asked for. They're not big items. They're, they're like, you know, toiletries and things like that. And what we do is I, I encourage you to pick one of those, take it, and purchase and as a family purchase those items and then bring them back to the church now if you'll do me a favor though if you if you get one of those right on top of the counter there above that is also a list of those names with a blank beside it what i need you to do is take one of those and then write the name of the person you've gotten on your bulb write it on that list so we can correlate so if at some time that we know who to call so because you took that name and so maybe we can remind you but then when you bring the gift back please bring the bulb with you and so that way we can attach it and then we'll take it to the home uh on on the the few days after that so please pick those up man you've always been very generous uh to that so please on your way out today pick one of those up or over the next uh, few days or even next week if there's any left you can pick them up then but please pick one up and sign whose name you have on it um Parents Night Out is coming up this Friday. Woo woo. So uh, hopefully you're ready for that and you're looking forward to that. Uh, so please, you need to register by tomorrow. If you know of anybody that would benefit from this, please remind them and they register as well. Something that, that's been added to this is Gina Wellburn and a few others are going to be doing free gift wrapping. And you can't beat that, especially if you're like me and can't wrap. Then they, they'll be wrapping gifts. That'll be here that day on Friday from 9 to 12. So you can drop your gifts off, they'll wrap them for you and, and get them back to you. Or even that night, when you drop your kids off, you can drop the gifts and they'll be here that evening to wrap up gifts for you. So please uh, remember that as well, okay? Uh, and we'll also be decorating this Wednesday, Wednesday night, which does remind me that if you'd like to help us get all of our Christmas decorations down, please hang around for just a few minutes. won't take us long if there's, very, if there's a lot of us here. We'll get them down and then Wednesday at 5.30, we're going to be decorating the church so please come back and, and join us for that. We'll even give you some pizza. Amen. So come and eat with us and then we'll be decorating the church. So come help us out with that. And Patrick wanted me to remind you that uh, if you look down at the bottom, the Christmas concert that we had, that's been canceled uh, because of the, the, the COVID cases have increased. We, we want to make sure our crowds are manageable and having one concert, we were afraid we couldn't manage that well enough. So that has been canceled. Okay. But we will reschedule them again. Uh, later on in the spring sometime maybe okay all right man that's enough look in your bulletin for anything else that's there but if you want to help us to get decorations down please hang out for just a few moments won't take us long okay so we'll be dismissed here in just a moment we'll dismiss on the south side over here so barry will let you go first and uh barry will come through here and dismiss you over here on the north side if you'll just hang out for just a little bit remember your tithes and offerings and other things can go into the offering box in the back on your way out okay god bless you Thank you for coming, and we hope to see you Wednesday, and if not, Sunday morning, all right? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to gather here today, and for the time that we've had observing the Lord's Supper, lighting the uh, the, the Advent candles, and Father, just celebrating the risen Savior. Go with us now, keep everyone safe, and bring us back again next Sunday. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Let's start over.